Hi, I'm Lindsay from American Heritage Cooking, and today we're going to make caramel sauce two different ways. So both methods of caramel making have the same end result, so really you can choose whichever method you find easiest. Um, there's the wet method and then the dry method, which is how we're going to start. Dry just means that there's no water or corn syrup or anything mixed in with the sugar while it's caramelizing. So we're just going to jump right in. First, we're going to melt our butter and our heavy cream, so that way when you add it to the hot caramel, it doesn't seize. So we're going to put our heavy cream into a little baby pot. We're going to add a little butter into the pot. I like to just go ahead and add my vanilla and my salt, because this is a salted caramel into the same pot, just so I don't have to worry about adding it at the end. And then we'll just put that over a low heat until it boils and the butter has melted, and it'll be ready to go. So with a dry caramel, I like to preheat my pan, and that way, as you add the sugar, it starts to melt immediately. So I just like to add it just a little bit at a time, just a little kind of sprinkle on the bottom, and then as that starts to melt, I'll add a little bit more. And unlike with the wet caramel, we are allowed to stir this one. Um, it's actually quite encouraged. So I'm just gonna put the rest of it in there because I can see that it's starting to caramelize on the bottom. And we just wanna make sure that we don't burn our caramel before we add all the sugar. You see how that started to turn color? It looks chunky and you're like, oh my God, I screwed it up. You didn't, it's okay. So you just want to keep kind of stirring it and making sure you rearrange it so that no particular part of it is getting too dark. And I like to kind of break up the big pieces just so to encourage that they remelt. The idea is that your caramel is forming. Those little pockets of sugar are like 320 degrees. And so they're going to start to melt the pieces that are not already melted. So it's really, it's kind of like at a medium amber at this very moment. I'm gonna turn it down, and that way it'll give me, oh hey, it'll give me a little bit more time to allow the sugar to melt, and so I don't have any chunks in my caramel before it starts to do what it's doing now. So I've just taken it off the heat, um, and that's totally okay. You were just, you were in control here. You were, you were controlling what the caramel is doing, and so before it gets too dark, I wanna make sure that all of that sugar has re-melted, or has melted. All right, we are gonna go back on the heat. I am ready. It is almost at a color that is acceptable. It's kind of a very light amber right now. And I'm just gonna let it, I'm gonna let it cook on its own without agitating it anymore. So we're at a dark amber. You can see it's starting to smoke, and that's a very good indication that you are right at that point where you could go too far. So take that off the heat carefully. Get your whisk and your melted butter and cream, and you want to make sure that you are whisking as you add it. Be very careful. The steam will burn you. You don't want to plop all of this in there at once, or you're going to encourage the caramel to really go crazy, and you could get a nice little caramel burn on your on your hand. And those hurt. Oh shoot! Hello. So this one seized a little bit, which and by that I just mean this. That happened. It's fine. We're just gonna we'll put it back over here on the, the hot burner. I'm not going to turn the heat on, but I'm just going to encourage it to incorporate. And now that it's smooth homogenous, we're just going to pour it into a bowl or some sort of heat resistant thing, vessel. You can find more tips and tricks and also the recipe for a dry caramel at AmericanHeritageCooking.com.